really hope you like this video. Just subscribe, like, and click the bell to be notified of more content just like this. John Richardson and Charlie McCann are here. Incredibly busy Christmas period. Uh, I, I say, unfortunately, we've started this show for the last three weeks talking about the death of Maradona. Uh, last week, Paolo Rossi and sadly, Gerard Houllier, John Richardson, uh, this week. Uh, and I think the one thing that's come through from everybody who's associated with Gerard, he, he just seemed one, one heck of a nice fella. Yeah, well, I, I can endorse that, Rob. Uh, really nice man. Not bad at managing either, was he? You know, uh, who can forget 2001? I saw all that, you know, watching him in the UEFA Cup, the FA Cup, the League Cup. And I've been speaking to Robbie Fowler today for his column for the, the Sunday Mirror. And Robbie said that he, he thought that Gerrard sort of brought Liverpool into the 21st century, you know, with some of the, uh, the things behind the scenes. You know, he was, he was good on diets, et cetera, et cetera. And at first, you know, he, he sort of dovetailed, didn't he, with Roy Evans. That didn't work. And then Gerard was given his, his head and uh, so the rest is history. I actually spoke to him, I don't know, about three months ago, uh, a piece I was doing uh, on uh, Leipzig because uh, he's been not stopped the sporting director or been a consultant there. And as usual, you know, I rang him. He, he lives just outside Paris. And uh, he says, oh, he says, look, I'm sorry. I, I can't do it now. I'm, I'm meeting somebody. I will ring you back in an hour's time. Now, you know, when you get that, you think, oh, that's not going to happen. But an hour, hour went suddenly, John, Gerard here. You know, what, what, what do you want to talk to me about? And that was him. Brilliant. And I know that um, he was very close to Ian Rush. Rushy was, I uh, always spoke very highly of him and very sad. But in, in, in certain ways, you know, Gerard did well because he was almost lost to us, wasn't he, years and years ago. Um, but no, very sad. Um, we're, My, we're um, sorry, Charlie. Uh, I, I remember David Moyes speaking to me going back a few years ago when he was manager of Edison. And he turned around and said, when he took over at Goodison, Gerard Houllier rang him up and said, I think it would be a good idea if we went for dinner. And he said he thought it was a most wonderful gesture and they got on famously, the pair of them. So when um, <clears throat> um, Rafa Benitez came to Liverpool, David Moyes rang Rafa Benitez up to, to welcome him and say, would you like to go for dinner? And Rafa Benitez said, bugger off. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a brilliant, it, brilliant. But also says, I, th I think, says something about, without question, uh, Gerard Hulli, a, a very sad yeah. loss once again for football and a sad loss this week for everybody. Um, let, let's, let's talk about the football. I just wonder if we can get a smile out of Charlie McCann after Everton's... <laughs> Uh, beaten Chelsea, beaten Leicester. They're up to fifth by my reckoning. They're five off the top of the league. Will we get a smile? Oh, fabulous. You know, tremendous defensive displays, two clean sheets, two different goalkeepers. Um, it just it seems a strange thing that when he was under pressure, but he has his best game of the season against Chelsea and he gets dropped. But I think playing four fullbacks, there's no real future in that and we were fortunate that we played two teams who were going to have more of the ball with us what do we do Arsenal are in that sort of cusp if it was a good Arsenal side when we play but we're still going to play the, you can't drop any of the four but the, you know the, there is no future in it Alan is is out um, but terrific you know you've got you've got to say you know, you know a terrific defensive performances I'm a massive Mason Holgate fan less so Yerimina and I wonder what the, the long term future is um, you know, I love Godfrey, Ben Godfrey as well. I want Godfrey and Holgate to play in the centre defence. Maybe if it's a three with Michael Keane, um, but it would be completely churlish to say anything other than interesting as well. James Rodriguez not involved in in either of those. Um, it would be churlish uh, to criticise anything other than two clean sheets, six extraordinary points, and uh, you know it just shows that why Carlo Ancelotti is paid the big money. But it. <laughs> Is playing four centre halves the future? I would suggest not. Uh, Rico, uh, I know you saw the game, uh, the Chelsea game. They've gone flat, haven't they? I mean, 
it's an extraordinary season. Can you put it down to too many games? Um, uh, you know, the, the Kai Havertz hasn't really shown up. Werner looked a bit flat. Is, is, it, is it just too much for Chelsea? Well, as Frank Lampard said himself, they, they weren't at it. Um, you know, they, they probably deserved a point against uh, Charlie's team. Um, you know, they hit the woodwork twice. Jordan Pickford played well. By the way, I thought Gilfie Sigurdsson had a very good game. You know, uh, he, he, he ran the midfield. Very disappointed with Kai Havertz. Uh, you know, I watched a lot of Bundesliga games last season. I, I, I just didn't know what all the fuss was about. And then Chelsea pay enormous sums of money. And he, for me, he's a poorer version of Mason Mount. Mason Mount's a far better player. And you know when usually you can see, oh, well, somebody's, somebody will do it in the future. I can't with him. He's, he's very lightweight. Um, the best, he does get into decent positions. Um, he has got an eye for goal, but um, he, he's, he's not doing it. And as, as for Ver, Timo Werner, I'm, I'm a huge Timo Werner fan, but he's, he's missing far too many chances. Uh, I think his conversion rate is something like 18%, which, you know, for a, a player of his stature, a, a German international, is not good enough. So I think there's um, one or two players are off it at the moment and, and Frank's got to get them going again. He was very dismissive after the game against Everton of Chelsea's title chances. He says, you know, those people are talking about it. It's, it's all hot air as far as he's concerned now. I think that's a bit of damage limitation. I think deep down he must be a title challenger because we know what happens, don't we, at Chelsea? If, if, if you if, if you fall off, you know, sort of the pace, uh, Roman Abramovich, you know, would get rid of him just so you get rid of all the other managers like Carlo Ancelotti, for instance, who won the double. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's all to do with Frank. But um, I wouldn't lose heart. It's going to be interesting Christmas period, but uh, they need a win. Uh, Charlie, do, do, do we um, uh, underestimate the, the, the pace, the power, the pressure of the Premier League when a players like Havertz or, or Werner, despite their, their big transfer fees, you know, it, it, is it tough for them? Is it catching up with them a little bit? Um, I'm sure it is, but I, I just wonder where you're going to accommodate all, all, all these sort of players, I think Pulisic is the best, at, you know, um, so if he's going to play left side of the three central, uh, uh, stri of the three strikers, rather, um, who's going to play, you, you, you would, then you've got Giroud, who's scored what, four goals, and, and, you know, again, it seems to be the only guy who, who's, so where do these, where do Habits and, and, and um, Werner fit in? And, uh, John talks about, I think Werner was as at least as ineffective as Havertz. Um, I just thought he was on the periphery. I thought he was really, really poor. And it was interesting, the commentator said, you know, I was listening, I was watching on, on being, and but the commentator was said that Thiago Silva actually gave him a bollock in and said, you know, come on, get, get your finger out. Uh, and this, I think, was when they were 1-0 up rather than, you know, when they were uh, uh, drawing or, or indeed behind. I just wonder about Chelsea. I'm also, you know, I also think that um, um, people talk about Mason Mount getting in the England side as well. How can we accommodate him and Jack Grealish in the same team? No, please don't mention them in the same breath. One is a complete superstar and Mason Mount's a good player. Um uh, would it bother Spurs fans? I'm sure the result would have bothered Spurs fans. Rico, I, I, I'm guessing you saw the, the Liverpool Spurs game. 20, 24% possession for Spurs. Does, is that a concern? Bearing in mind they carved out a series of good chances. Well, well, to be fair, they had the better chances and they should have got something from the game. So, you know, Josie would have... Well, we're in seconds away from getting the point, weren't they? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a little bit disappointed with the way they do set up. I mean, they, they should be more buoyant than they are. I mean, they've got the players to attack, as we, we've talked about in weeks gone, Charlie and I have talked, talked about it. I mean, they've got fantastic attacking players, but that is that is Josie Mourinho. And you, you can't really argue with his record, can you? I mean, No, at the same time, the same time another poor man we lost, a, a dear friend, Norman Hunter, uh, when he was talking about that great lead side of the 70s, he said, he, uh, you know, any regrets, he said... He wishes Don Revy had let them off the leash. That was his phrase. Let, let, let them, he said, we always had the handbrake on. 
And I just, I just wonder at what point Harry Kane knocks on the door and goes, hey, Gaffer, you know, shouldn't, you know, shouldn't we, you know, we've got this amazing attacking talent. I, I, could, I could be wrong. I, I don't know. They, they look like they play with the handbrake on. I don't think he deli deliberately sets them out like that. I mean, it, yeah. it's the way some, some games happen. You know, you're playing Liverpool. You, you know, you, you don't go gung-ho against Liverpool, do you? So you've got to have some caution, but at the same time, you know, you, you need that solid foundation. And I think, I think we all think, that Spurs then have the, the, the offensive armoury to, to uh, capitalise on that. And, uh, you know, Spurs have had a good season so far, so you can't really knock it. Instead, they deserve something against Liverpool. So Jose is doing something right. Charlie, what's your take on it? I didn't think they deserved anything against Liverpool. Um, I thought the best team won. I thought if they'd have come out and attacked Liverpool, they'd have got a, an absolute hiding. I thought that was a sensational Liverpool performance. For about 60, 70 minutes, I thought Curtis Jones looked a world-beater. I thought the centre-half was outstanding. The new thing, you know, he could be 45th choice for all. I, you know, I'm not bothered about that. I thought he was sent... I thought Liverpool were tremendous. And yes, they had some good chances. Of course they did. Um, but you're not telling me Liverpool didn't have... You know, why do people forget Liverpool's ch chances? And Liverpool, you know, it, it, I know they got... Why did they only have 20-odd uh, percent of the possession? As well, he set his team out poorly. I know Lo Celso made the goal in the first half, but that poor lad played in the centre, where, you know, and he, he just ran, ran, ran from side to side, chasing shadows. He and Hoiberg. Um, but if they'd have come out and played a more uh, offensive game, they'd have got battered by Liverpool. I was seriously impressed with Liverpool. Really, really impressed. And I, I, you almost get more and more impressed, almost, you know, and, and every sort of... Uh, knock they take they keep coming back and I, rem I remember Phil Taylor turning around to me a couple of uh, uh, about 10 years ago <clears throat> and he was knackered absolutely knackered he played in the Premier League and then he came to Gibraltar to play in Dart tournament and he was sat down between a quarter final and semi final uh, of a, a, a tournament and he turned around to me and he said if they don't beat me today they'll never beat me and I get the impression Klopp thinks if these guys do not beat Liverpool this season, they won't beat them for the next five years. Um, Rico, Manchester United could go second with a, a win with their game in hand. Um, uh, where are we with Manchester United this week? Oh, that's what you keep on saying. It's just a roller coaster to me. <laughs> um, you know, Ollie, Ollie always pulls these results out, doesn't he? <laughs> Just when the heat's on. And uh, dare I mention that somebody played quite well last night. Yes, indeed. Yeah, he, he, he played, that must be his one game in 10. Um, so fair, fair play to him. But they were devastating on the break. Absolutely devastating. I think, was, the, was it the third goal? Second or third goal was absolutely... Lovely goals. Tremendous, absolutely tremendous. It, you know, if, if you want to show how to counter attack, it was the one that he he started. Um, absolutely tremendous goal. Yeah, I mean, we we know they can do it, but at the same time, there's always a banana skin around the corner, and that that's when the heat is on because it's Manchester United. You know, Man United. You know, the, the club they are, they're supposed to win this, win that. They've got to win every game. So Ollie knows that, but I think he handles the pressure very well. It doesn't appear to get to him, and he's got players responding. Uh, are they done for Sheffield United, Charlie? Yeah, um, I, I was, I, and that, I got again put a, a hand up. I said, I think two or three weeks ago, I thought they had enough to get out. No, they haven't. And what struck me is they go up to Manchester United, and to me, how can you be hit on the break then? How you know you, you've got to what we have, we hold, we've got to get goal side, we've got to fight, even at 1-1. Um, I, I just thought it was... I didn't think it was good enough. I didn't think it was Premier League quality, I'm afraid. I also, you know, the, the little... You know, they fought as in, you know, they only had three yellow cards and things like that, but, you know, they probably... Michael Oliver was a bit benevolent. But I just didn't see enough. I, I'm sorry to say, and, and I think he's a good manager... And I love the, the the fact that you know if we get relegated, he'll still be the manager in August 2021, and I like that. But they are, and I'm sorry. Well, he, um, yeah, is, sorry. he put money on that, are you? Well, I mean, people have gone; they've gone on record. But as you say, uh, you know, the, the, this is the week when Slaven Bilic got a one-one draw at at uh, Eastlands, and he got the sack. So, uh, as you say, it, it, it's probably not worth 
you know the breath, but um, um, I, I I think that they're, they're, they're doomed now. Charlie, Charlie, I hope you're right. By the way, I mean he doesn't deserve, but um, I'm sorry, but the Premier League is ruthless, and we know that, don't we? And uh, I don't think he will survive. Um, let's it brings me on to my next point, Rico. Uh, Fireman Sam back in the game. Literally five minutes after I WhatsApped him to say Happy Christmas, his wife will not be happy because they always have a lovely Christmas holiday and he keeps knackering it up by taking jobs around about Christmas. Yeah, well, obviously, Sam needs the money, doesn't he? You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, this is it's incredible. This eighth Premier League club, absolutely amazing. Uh, hey, everybody loves Sam. You know, I love him. He's, he's a fantastic bloke. He's great with the media. But I tell you what, you know, a nice little bonus if he keeps them up. Can't lose. Two million talking about if he keeps them up. It's sort of a, a six month contract. Two yeah. million if he keeps them up, plus his wages. And then he might take them for a year after that. He, he won't. He'll be on holiday then. <laughs> yeah, it'll be another nice little learner. But to be fair, as he did at Everton, I know Charlie might go on about the football, but, you know, he steadied the ship at Everton and I think he did a very good job. Um, and he'll, he'll do his. Oh, he's shaking his head. It, it, <laughs> No, he didn't. Did do a good job. You haven't laughed. We bought check check Tosin for twenty six million quid. We've still got him. Let's hope uh, when he gets to the Hawthorns. Let's get the hope he gets Tosin in January. <laughs> you can have him for, for two bob rather than twenty six million. What about where, Theo as well? Where, where did he, <laughs> where did, hey, Theo's on fire at Southampton. Don't knock Theo. Yeah, he's playing for a contract as well. As soon as he gets the contract. <laughs> Back in Snooze Land as well. Anyway, listen, listen. Damn, most, nice most, good, good most, new, most neutral uh, football observers would know that he did a good job at Everton. Anyway, we'll move you, on. You think Everton were going down when he yes. took? You did, right? Okay. No, I'm joking, <laughs> fellas. Fellas, I, I, I know Rico's. If he keeps Rico's. If he keeps West Brom up, fine. I will hold my hand up, but he won't. <laughs> um. Rico's got to go. Uh, lads, thank you. I think it's fair to say a, a big happy Christmas has been the last one we do before Christmas. Big, big happy Christmas to you both. Uh, best wishes to Newcastle as well. We didn't get a chance to mention them no, today. I think, Rico, it's fair to say we knew who is bar humbug Mr Scrooge this Christmas, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> He's on form today, isn't he? He's on form. <laughs> Obviously, he doesn't like Christmas. You can tell him. Look at that pathetic tree behind him. Look at it. <laughs> Sam Allardyce did a good job at Goodison. Listen, 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 boys. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Listen to both of you. Have a have an absolutely fantastic Christmas to you and your and families, you. and we'll do it all again after Christmas. Yes, Take care, fellas. Peace, guys. Have a lovely time. <laughs>